Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 3, Episode 19, titled Red Tape. It has to be one of my more favorite names of an episode in Season 3. Straightforward. No little puns into the name like last week or anything like that. It's about a dirty cop because that's what Miami Vice does well. When you hear Red Tape, you know it's something internal. You know IA is getting involved. <laughs> Everybody's dirty there. <laughs> it originally premiered on March 13th, 1987. It is written by Dennis Koopa. Koopa. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Cooper. He's directed a bunch of episodes. Made for each other, Sons and Lovers, The Good Caller, Streetwise. He's also the third season co-producer. So this fits with what happens in season three where the producers basically write every episode. It is directed by Gabrielle Beaumont, who has one more episode coming called Heroes of the Revolution. Revolution, which is the last episode of season three, which, believe it or not, is only in five weeks. I know. I can't believe that. We're going to be done with season three. That's incredible. And I cannot wait. To let the hype begin for season four. I cannot wait for season four because it's Miami Vice, the Dallas season. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. You, you thought it was like a soap opera before? <laughs> I can't wait for UFOs and devil possessions. <laughs> I was going to say, someone might be possessed. I don't know. Someone might get amnesia. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Someone does get amnesia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. I mentioned that we have two songs from one band. And I saw the band. And I'm like, I cannot wait for this one, actually, because I know nothing about this band. All right. So we have Money Talks and Closer to Heaven. Both songs by the Alan Parsons Project. The Alan Parsons Project is a British progressive rock band that existed between 1975 and 1990. It consisted pretty much primarily of Alan Parsons and Eric Wolfson, and then just plethora of other guys, of other musicians who would rotate into the band over the years. Alan Parsons and uh, Eric Wolfson, they actually met in the canteen of Abbey Road Studios. Mm. Uh, yeah, the Abbey Road. In the summer of 1974, you see Parsons had been working as an assistant engineer on the Beatles' Abbey Road album from 69 and the Beatles' Let It Be album from 70. And he had just finished engineering Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album, which was released in 73. Damn. Yeah. So at that time, Wilson was singer, songwriter, composer, who was working for the studio as a session p- pianist. Essentially, these guys met in 74 while they were working on these just incredible, you know, massive albums. And in their time on the side, they were working on this thing, this Edgar Allan Poe project. They started messing with these other things. They, they experimented with, uh, like, film industry themed music and, and stuff, like, inspired by Kubrick. And it pretty much involved a bunch of different session musicians and a bunch of different names and ultimately led to... The two of them teaming up and releasing their first album on, as the Alan Parsons Project called Tales of Mystery and Imagination in 1976. So Tales of Mystery and Imagination, it would be pretty successful. It would mostly be successful in the U.S. as we reach the top 40 on the Billboard chart. And that seems to be the thing with the Alan Parsons Project is that they were very popular in America and in continental Europe, but they weren't very popular in the U.K. where they were from. They actually didn't have any top 40 singles or, or albums in the UK. That's kind of a weird scenario. Yeah, usually it's the other way around, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And especially when you, when they were pretty much working in studios with, you know, Pink Floyd and the Beatles, like the biggest bands from the UK, they really had most of their success in America. In the late 70s, early 80s, they would continue to see success all the way until 1984's Don't Answer Me became their last successful single in the US, but still reaching the top 15. Pretty much by the 90s, they'd fizzled out. 87's Gotti would be their last project. They planned another album called Freudiana, uh, that was supposed to be released in 1990, but event- but Wolfson would end up turning that into more of a musical, and uh, because of the difference of directions they were heading, that would actually lead to them pretty much disbanding by the 90s. Alan Parsons would continue on and have a solo career. Wolfson would go on to 
produce three musicals based on the music of the Alan Parsons project. Fordia, Gotti, and The Gambler. Alan Parsons, by the way, if you wonder why he got top billing in the band, well, when he joined the band, he actually declined Pink Floyd's invitation to work on the follow-up to Dark Side of the Moon, album Wish You Were Here. Uh, instead, Damn. he decided to work on the Alan Parsons Project. Pretty wow. much from the end of the Alan Parsons Project to now, he has still been producing and working behind the scenes and still touring and doing and putting on shows. So I mentioned that I didn't really know that much about the Alan Parsons project, but it turns out Alan Parsons has been an integral part of my favorite music. He is deeply involved with a lot of it. <laughs> it's weird, but there's going to be a somewhat of a theme here, but I feel like I have you top. I top working with Pink Floyd and the Beatles. Well, our next song is best adventures by think man, you know, think man, a gigantic band or, <laughs> exactly you never heard of him who the hell is <laughs> yeah. think man well, think they? man <laughs> is the brainchild is the brainchild of rupert hein who's rupert hein rupert hein is an english musician singer songwriter and record producer and so i'm just gonna break his biography down by decades in the early 60s, time with half of the duo, Rupert and Dave. They performed mostly in pubs and clubs, with occasionally being joined on stage by a then-unknown Paul Simon. Wow. And they, they would only release one single, and it would be a cover of Paul Simon's 1965 hit, Sounds of Silence. They would not see any success from it, but they did feature a young Jimmy Page on guitar. No way. Yes. Yes, Robert Hine was hanging out with Paul Simon and Jimmy Page before they were anybody. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Let's jump to the 70s. So in the 70s, Hine released two solo albums under his own name. One would be Pick a Bone in 1971 and Unfinished Picture in 1973. He would then form a band called Quantum Jump. They would release <laughs> albums in 76 and 77. So by the way, when I just state that they released an album and I don't follow it up with, and it was blank, blank, blank on Billboard blank chart, it usually means like it didn't suck. It made a little money. <laughs> they played it on the radio once. None of this stuff really took off, but he just kept banging stuff out. The band Quantum Jump did have one unexpected hit that they re-released in 79 before the band would eventually break up in the 80s. So now we're in the 80s. Uh, Hein would release several more solo albums to start off the decade. And then in 85, he would write and produce much of the soundtrack for the movie Better Off Dead. Oh, oh my wow. God. <laughs> so uh, after that, he would release three albums under the name Think Man. He would release 85's The Formula, which featured Stuart Copeland of The Police. In 1998, he would release Life is a Full-Time Occupation, and in 91, he would release Hard Hat Zone. So now we're into the 90s. From the 90s until now, he's been in involved in several projects, but the big thing out of all of them uh, was he oversaw the direction and contribution to a and contributed to a compilation CD called Songs for Tibet, Art of Peace. The Songs of Tibet compilation in 2008 during the beijing olympics was the third most downloaded album on itunes so uh, okay aside, i mean that's kind of a weird that all way of that, that he makes his uh that he uh, makes his money <laughs> it's the beijing olympics <laughs> <laughs> yes that's probably where he's made more money than any of the stuff any of the albums he released before was on was on the uh beijing olympics uh songs for tibet album because of downloads <laughs> uh, aside from all of that he actually was a good producer he actually produced albums for uh tina turner rush and the fix just to name a few so now you know who rupert hein is <laughs> I feel like this was one of those music segments. All right, sit your ass down. I'm going to learn you. Yeah. <laughs> I went into this. And I, I had heard of the Alan Parsons Project, but I knew absolutely nothing about it, except that I hoped it featured someone named Alan Parsons. <laughs> 
I went into this pretty blind. I learned a ton. It is so weird with both of these guys, just how interconnected they were to some really big name bands and artists. Group in Heinz case, Paul Simon, Jimmy Page, before they were anybody. It's just crazy how when you do when I do the research on this music stuff, just how interconnected it is sometimes. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love, love, love to hear from you. Email us, heat at gmail.com or tweet at us at go with the heat and let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. We are obviously gushing heavily over this. Let us know what you think and let us know what you think about the tubs that we got in this episode. Or about Dominic's beefcake. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? No. Just saying he's a sexy man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com or tweet at us at go with the heat. Be sure to check out the website. I just made some tweaks to the website, so it should be a little bit easier to get around, a little bit easier to find the feeds. Go check it out, go with the heat.com. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pal.